family, Dennis and Sue Dunlap, and Beckley's Catering. If you'd like to be a WHJ booster, send $15 for your family, $25 for your business to the WHJ Booster Club. And after the game was that he received a bump on his head when he made the initial hit of the lineup. Welcome back to Ben Davis High School. Yancey Deering along with Kep Carmichael here. It's homecoming night here at Ben Davis, the home of the Giants. We just had the official game ball brought in by Big John Gillis of another area radio station. Brings in and uh, they dropped the football out from a helicopter. So pretty interesting stuff going on here from Ben Davis High School. Uh, that definitely a festive homecoming crowd here at Ben Davis. We see all of the uh, court and the queen will be brought in on t uh, Corvettes with, that are convertible or T-tops. So very uh, a classy homecoming here from Ben Davis High School. Purple and white all over the Ben Davis stands as now the Ben Davis High School football team is coming onto the playing field announced on the field. Carmel Greyhound supporters are in good numbers on the opposite sidelines, hoping to cheer on their Greyhounds. Great, Carmel Greyhounds versus the Ben Davis Giants here from Ben Davis High School. A couple of things to remind our listeners, don't forget the boys tennis state going on tomorrow at North Central High School. Also the boys cross country sectional will be going on and the boys and girls soccer team start their sectional. So go out, support your Greyhounds as they start tournament play all over and be sure uh, on some extra added liners on that boys tennis state. You can listen to WHJE during the tennis match to hear all, some spot reports from Kim Brockman from North Central High School. So for the best in Greyhound sports, it's here on WHJ. Balloons have been released and uh, looks like we're ready for a football game cap as we see the Carmel Greyhound team march into the field. Good matchup tonight between both teams. Ben Davis comes in at five and one. The Greyhounds with a, a shy record of four and three. Rather, I guess Ben Davis six and one, the Greyhounds four and three. Ben Davis a very overpowering team, has a very good defense, just really strong all around. Coach Belton says the thing that really worries him is the team speed and to accommodate that, it really seems kept that they've, uh, the Greyhounds might have added some twists and turns into their lineups. Greyhounds will be showing quite a bit of motion, a lot of motion in the backfield, trying to mix it up back there, give the Ben Davis Giants some different looks and see if they may possibly be able to fool both the offense and defense of Ben Davis. You know, Coach Dullahan, Dick Dullahan of Ben Davis, uh, formerly of Carmel High School, and you see a lot of similarities between the two teams. For instance, the thing with the captain, something the Greyhounds started to do last year uh, toward the during the sectional where the whole team came out for the coin toss. We see Ben Davis also does that. Also, there's a similarity in fireworks. So these schools are very evenly matched up in probably all aspects of this football game, Cap, and I think we're gonna see a really good football game tonight. A lot of high intensity football, I think. A lot of second effort, good strong tackling and good strong running from both teams. Carmel Greyhounds desperately needing a win here. Four and three record have had some, a few difficult games, but overall they've really beaten themselves. A lot of penalties throughout the year. So if they play good heads up football and be consistent, they have an excellent possibility to win this ball game. Is the coin toss now going on on the field? Decatur and Kennedy, the captains for the Greyhounds, go into the team. Ben Davis run the toss and deferred. I believe the Greyhounds now will receive to start off the ball game. So the Greyhounds will start. You know, another interesting point, Cap, is that the Greyhounds have earlier in the season had what we were calling the second half jinx. Well, Ben Davis has not had that problem. They've not allowed a touchdown in the third quarter in in the year, so they have a very, very good, strong defense. So we see this is really toted as one of the big games of the week. We see t area television stations here. Um, also, a lot of people wondering about Mike Sharp. Well, he is feeling better. His back is okay, and we will see action from him tonight. We weren't, we're not sure if he will do the punting for the Greyhounds, but we are sure that we will see him coming out of the backfield a lot. And we are ready to start here as the last regular season football game to take on live from Ben Davis High School. Bo Shabel will, will be doing the kicking for the Ben Davis Giants. Back deep for the Carmel Greyhounds is sophomore Ron Herman. 
and Pete Harrington, a senior wideout for the Greyhounds. They're back on their own two yard line, ready to start this Ben Davis homecoming ball game. Shable set, ready to kick off a straight on kicker. Ball placed on the 40 yard line, a long 10 yard run for him. This ball game just about to get underway. And Shable gets into the kick. It's a high but short kick. Will be fielded by one of his up men, but fumbled at the 15 yard line. He takes it up to the 20 and hit right there. Struggles through for a couple more yards out to about the 23. Eric Gunderson, receiver for the Carmel Greyhounds. Tell you one thing that the Hounds have really been doing well that so far, especially lately, is returning on kickoffs. A uh, little problem on that one. And uh, they took it right to Gunderson, who hadn't had a lot of returns. So the Greyhounds will take over. It's first and 10 from their own 23-yard line. Todd King brings him out of the huddle. Bill Padgett sets up over center. I formation behind him with Cole. And now some movement in the backfield. Split formation, Herman and Cole, the running backs. Two men out wide, left and right. Padgett barks out the signals left and right. Hand off to the second man through, getting a couple yards over the 25. Breaks a tackle of 30, 35 and dropped down at the 40-yard line. That was Ron Herman on the carry, a great carry by Ron Herman. Hit at the line of scrimmage and kept that extra effort going and that excellent speed. Got him out for a great gain for a first down. 17-yard gainer on the play for the sophomore. And I'll tell you, Herman did more than get his feet wet last week as he stepped into Sharp's place. And I think that they are going to go with Herman at first. Maybe we'll see Sharp later. We don't know. First and 10, I formation, some switching in the backfield, moving to the pro set. Adam Ritz goes in motion in the tight end. Handoff goes to the first man through. That's Cole breaking some tackles over the 45, close to the 47, 49-yard line. That'll be very close to a first down. The whole Greyhound team fired up. They come out with two big run plays. And Cap, we see why they're fired up. They want to beat this Ben Davis team. Ben Davis is an extremely good team. I believe they're just short of a first down by inches. So a good nine yard at plus pickup for Toby Cole. So it'll be second and inches to go for the Greyhounds. Eye formation. No, moving to the power eye formation. Doing some more movement in the backfield. The split formation behind Padgett with Herman and Cole. Two men out wide to the right. Padgett drops straight back to pass. Little swing pass over to one of the backs. He's in for the first down over midfield to the 45, but there is a penalty flag on the play. That's going to be probably a roughing on the passer, so that could give the Greyhounds even more added extra yardage as Herman did pick up the reception to move out for the first down. They're talking to Bill Padgett, so that is going to go against Ben Davis. We'll wait and see what they're going to do. The Greyhounds, of course, I'm sure will take the penalty and the yardage for even more yardage. So the Greyhounds showing great offensive movement with two big runs from the running backs and now a little swing pass from Padgett picking up some more yardage. The penalty was against the, Gray was against the ben, Davis ben Davis Giants and the penalty will be marked off. That will be a 15 yard penalty against the Ben Davis Giants for roughing the passer. So the Greyhounds get another break and that's going to move the ball all the way to the 36 yard line. Now the Ben Davis fans trying to fire up to pull their Giants back. The Greyhounds really trying to confuse Ben Davis. We see him using a lot of motion. I think that they're gonna, at times they won't use any motion, at times they're gonna use a lot and that's really gonna confuse the Ben Davis Giants. So two tight ends in the ball game with the split formation behind Padgett with Cole and Herman, the running back. Gunderson moves in motion to the left. Long count from Padgett. And it's a handoff to the first man through. Cole, he busts over for a few yards down close to the 31-yard line. Toby Cole jumping over actually the Ben Davis front line, trying to get any added extra yards that he did. He did pick up four yards on the play. So Toby on two carries has 13 yards. Toby Cole really running the ball well uh, the last week as he took a lot of senior leadership when Sharp was down. I think we're going to see a lot of that leadership come out now in tonight's ball game. So Padgett sets up over, over center once again. Two men out wide to the right, switching to the I formation with Herman the tailback, Cole the fullback. Gunderson moves in motion to the left. Padgett hands off to the ball to Herman. He gets through just for a couple yards over near the 30-yard line. Sophomore on Herman hit hard on the initial play, as he might pick up a yard on the play. So that's going to bring third and five. The Greyhounds looking now for a big gainer because they're not quite close to field goal range. They don't have anybody really with the depth. Herman checks out of the ball game right now for the Hounds, and Sharp checks in. Third down and five. Sharp and Cole are the running backs, and Padgett goes back in the shotgun formation. Two men out wide left, one man out wide right. 
Low snap, Padgett controls it, dropping straight back. Little swing pass over to Sharp in the middle. He complete pass, and he is close to the first down. That should be good enough for the first down at the 25-yard line. Great pass from Padgett to Sharp. And that's going to be close. We're, it is first down Greyhound, so a five-yard pickup on the pass from Sharp. You kind of knew that you had that feeling kept when he came in the ball game, and you saw Billy drop back into the shotgun that that would probably be a quick dump off to Sharp right up front, and that's exactly what happened. The Greyhounds now have it first and 10 from inside the 25. Full house formation, two tight ends, three men in the backfield. Padgett barks out the signals left and right. Padgett drops back to pass after a fake handoff. He's going deep down the right side to Ryan Herman and incomplete in the end zone. Ryan Herman, the second string tight end, comes in in full house formation. Ball was just overthrown in the end zone. One of the few times we've seen it gone to Ryan Herman, the junior tight end. Uh, definitely a trick. We'll see a lot of tricks, I believe, in the game. Moore and Herman check out of the ball game. In comes Harrington along with, I believe, another receiver. So the Greyhounds now we might see even go up in the, to the air again. Second and 10 from the 25. The I formation once again. Switching to the full house formation, Herman and Cole are the running backs. Two men out wide, left and right. Padgett, handoff to the second man through. That's sharp over a few. Breaks a couple tackles. He got good yardage on the play that time. Down near the 12, 17 yard line. So Sharp with a seven yard pickup on the game. A good pickup for him. I think they were saving him at first to see and wait till what's gonna happen. And they did and it really seemed once Sharp came out, we don't see his back is affecting him any. So for right now, the word is go on Mike Sharp. Sharp stays in the ball game in the power eye formation. Moore, the power man, now switching to the full house with two, two men, two tight ends. Hand off to the second man through, and he has upended at the line of scrimmage after a very short game. Well, after they moved into the full house, then Moore came back up into the power eye, and they gave it to Moore. It is now going to be fourth and about two, a long two, closer to fourth and three, and the Greyhounds Bill Padgett's wanting to call a timeout, and he does, which gives us time to take a timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. Our thanks go out to the following WHJ boosters, Ron and Judy Bowman, Jim and Shirley Brake, Dr. and Mrs. Robert L. Bratton, Mr. and Mrs. David G. Breeding, Ted and Dottie Broad, Jim and Mary Ann Brocky. Billy Jean Brown, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis D. Brust, Larry and Kitty Buckle, Larry and Bonnie Burdick, George and Ollie Burrell, Jim and Joyce Burrell and family, Greg Burtnett, Terry and Rosalind Cady, John and Shirley Calhoun, Carmel Allstate Agent Robert Tresso, Carmel American Legion Post number 155, Carmel High School Ice Hounds Hockey Club, Ethel V. Carson, Tom and Barbara Cartmel, Vale and Ted Champion, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Chipetta. If you would like to be a WHJ booster, please send $15 for your family, $25 for your business to the WHJ Booster Club, 520 East Main Street, Carmel, Indiana. Welcome back to Ben Davis High School. Yancey Deering and Kep Carmichael bringing you all the action here as it is Ben Davis' homecoming. Score 0 0 left to go in the first quarter. And the Greyhounds now are going to go for it. It's fourth and two from about the 17. Power eye formation behind Padgett with two tight ends. Now they're switching power men. Now Moore is the power man and Sharp the tailback. Long count from Padgett, seeing if he can draw some encroachment. Hand off to the second man through. Sharp breaks some tackles. Good enough for the first down, close to the 10-yard line. Great play that time by Sharp. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Extra effort and forward motion. Got him for good yardage. So sharp with a strong seven yard pickup for the Greyhounds. The Greyhounds already have moved at 68 yards looking to put it into the end zone. It is going to be first and 10. And that's almost, it's very close to being first and goal. Kept about an inch off of the goal line. Can't get much closer to getting a first down without scoring the touchdown. Powerhouse, power, full house formation behind Paget. Hand off to the first man through, hit at the line of scrimmage, maybe got a couple yards on the play. So Toby Cole, the ball carrier for the Greyhounds, surges for about a yard on the play. Cole so far with 14 yards in the ball game off three carries. Uh, if he has a game like he had last week and we see a regular performance from Mike Sharp, the Hounds are going to have a very strong backfield. Full house with two tight ends. The Carmel Greyhounds, Padgett Parks out signals. 
Freeman in the backfield, Sharp, Cole, and Moore. Handoff to the second man through Sharp. He gets down to the seven yard line after another short ball gain. So Ben Davis really pick stacks up on defense, about a two yard pickup for Sharp. So he, to Sharp with 16 yards in the ball game, brings up now third in what looks to be seven yards on the play. King leading the team out of huddle. They need a big one here, Cap. Greyhound showing the power eye formation. Sharp is the power man. Now Morris shifts to the power man, and Sharp is the tailback. Two tight ends. Hand off to Sharp around the right side, getting a good couple good blocks inside the five yard line near the four. The, that's, go, that's close, Cap. It's going to bring up now fourth and about three. Bill Padgett getting some signals from Coach Belden on what they're going to do. I think they will go for it, Cap. I don't see them getting Mark Levat yet. They're calling in signals, so the Greyhounds will go for it. We could see a quick pass in for the Greyhounds. They have been keeping it on the ground. Watch for corner action into the end zones. The Greyhounds are already one for one in fourth down conversions. Two tight ends with a power eye formation. Padgett barks out the signals left and right. Hand off to the second man through Sharp, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. So the Greyhounds cannot convert on this possession. They lose the fourth down possession, and the Ben Davis Giants will have a first and 10 inside their five yard line. Maybe a smart play at that time for Coach Belden because he knows that he's going to give Ben Davis awful field position. The, the way the defense for the Greyhounds has been playing the last few games, Maybe it was a smart move, but we might be regretting that later in the game on a close game, not going for a field goal, but I guess that's why he's the coach, Cap. So the Greyhounds drive halted on the three yard line. Ben Davis, a team that likes to pass, so it's gonna, a lot of pressure tonight is going to be on the Carmel secondary. So the Ben Davis Giants move to the line. Ken, Ken Britt, the quarterback, sets up over center of the I formation behind him. Brent rolls out to his right on the option play, cuts it up, and gets a couple yards over the five near the seven. So the quarterback, Kent Brent, with the run on the first down. 4.35 left to go here in the first quarter of play. Our score tied at zero. A good, strong five-yard pickup for the quarterback. It'll be second down and five on around this eight-yard line. Ben Davis with terrible field position inside their 10. Britt sets up over center with the I formation behind him. Tooman wide out, left and right. Britt calls out the signs. A lot of motion in behind in the defense of Carmel. Hand off to the second man through a couple more yards on the play, close to the 10 yard line. So Ben Davis moving the ball consistently on the ground. Corey Harris, the ball carrier, a tailback for Ben Davis. Harris comes in at six foot, 173 pound senior. Also a free safety on defense. Pretty good player in Corey Harris. Two yards on the carry, so it'll be third down and three from the nine yard line. Britt over center, Guy Holbert and Harris are his running backs. Two men out wide, left and right. Some more shifting in the Carmel defense. Britt is the handoff to the left side, around the left side, breaks some tackles down near the 30 yard line, over to the 35 yard line. A great run that time from the Ben da Davis Giants. That was Harris once again on the run around the left side. So I'm close to a 15 yard pickup. We're gonna have to wait and see where they mark the ball. Actually longer than that, possibly a 25 yard gain on the play, a big gain for Ben Davis. Ben Davis had the Greyhounds looking past that time as Britt put on a nice fake, put on a nice fake that time, making it look like he was dropping back to pass. Harris around the left side for great yardage and enough for the first down. Made a good move on Trent Decatur there, two of the Greyhounds. As Decatur got thrown completely out of bounds by his own momentum on the good fake by Harris. A 20-yard run from Harris, so it'll be first and 10 from the 29 yard line. Britt over center, Holbert and Harris is running back, zooming out wide, left and right. Britt, handoff to the second man through, that's Harris stumbling on the play, but gets enough yardage. He gets up about five yards to the 35 yard line. A miscommunication on the handoff, and Harris almost fell down in the backfield. I don't think that was as much of a miscommunication, Cap, as it was, he just flat out fell. But wow, what an athlete, he picks up five yards on the gainer. So Harris has done 
Good job against the Carmel Greyhound defense, picking up 32 yards, rather picking up good yardage as Britt also has a small carry for the Giants. I formation behind Britt, two men out wide left and right. Harrison Holbert are the running backs. Britt hands off to Harris up the middle. He has enough for the first down over the 42 yard line, rather just over the 40 yard line. Harris once again showing excellent running ability, picking that, up another first down. That's the end of our first, or rather, excuse me, 217 left to go in the first quarter as they do pick up the first down. We heard a horn of some sort, Gap. Anyway, we'll bring up first and 10 from the Ben Davis 40 yard line and they're moving the ball very well. We haven't seen him go for a pass yet. Watch that to happen. First and 10, just over the 40 yard line. Britt over center, Holbert and Harris, the running backs, zooming out wide left and right. A lot of movement in the Carmel Greyhound defense. Once again, Britt rolls with left on the option play. Harris gets the pitch. He's got 10 yards don't over midfield to the 45 yard line, out of bounds there. Good move. They really called that one well. They let the Greyhound defense slip through the front line, moving them all straight back, and then they took the good pitch to Harris on another first down run, so a good 10-yard pickup on the play. Already Ben Davis has moved the ball in six plays, 46 yards, and they cross midfield. It now sits at the Hound 49-yard line. First and 10 inside Greyhound territory at the 49-yard line. Britt over center with a pro set in the backfield. Harrison Holbert is running back, two men out wide, left and right. Britt barks out the signals. Quick slant over the middle, incomplete. At around the 40 yard line, Demetrius Dowler, the intended receiver in the flat. They have moved it 46 yards, and Harris by himself has 43. The other was the first down of the possession when the quarterback, Kent Brent, Britt moved the ball out on a three yard gainer. So I tell you, Ben Davis, is now we see why they're one of the top ranked teams and coach Belton on Sports Edge last night so they probably could have been ranked higher than fifth. So the powerful giant offense steps to the line, Britt over center eye formation behind him. Harris and Holber once again is running backs. And it's fake handoff going to the option play. Harris gets the pitch, great off, great defensive play that time by Rick Atkins getting in there extremely quickly, dropping him for a big loss. Levant got the attention hit and held him there and then came big Ricky Atkins in nose guard and just leveled him. So a, about a six yard loss on the play is going to bring up third and 16 now for Ben Davis. Big play by the Carmel Greyhounds. Now they need to stop Harris. Although we do know Ben Davis likes to pass. They haven't, they've only showed us the pass once, but I think you can expect it here, Cap. So they're Britt's two wideouts are McGraw and Dowler, split formation behind him. Now McGraw goes in motion around the left side. Hand off right up the middle to Harris, and he is dropped down after a gain of about seven yards, so the Greyhounds hold. It'll be fourth down and about seven yards for the first down, and the punting unit coming on for the Giants. So the Greyhounds make a big stop there. Thank you, Mark Levat and Rick Atkins for the stop. In checks Ron Herman, who, who had a little problem on the punt returns last week, lost his footing a couple times. I think with the intensity, we're really gonna see Herman try to make back some big returns. And here's his first chance, or rather second chance, I guess, in the lights this evening, Cap. Herman back on his own 10 yard line, ready to receive the punt, a good snap, and a low kick will be fielded by Herman at the 15. He's up to the 20 yard line and dropped down right there at around the 19. A little bit too much lateral movement that time and caught from behind. 23 seconds now left to go in this first quarter. Our score is 0-0 live from Ben Davis High School and Cap, this looks like it's gonna be a heck of a game. Now it's just which, if they go continue to play even, it's which team can hang on, which team can keep this intensity up on this homecoming night here from Ben Davis High School. Both offense has shown tremendous capability, each driving for good yards before being stopped by a great defense. Split formation behind Paget Cole and Sharp, the running backs, hand off to Cole, right up the middle, breaking some tackles. He does 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, over midfield, down to the 40, the 35, the 30, the third 20, the 10, five, touchdown, Greyhounds on the run. Toby Cole, that must be his longest run from scrimmage of the year. That was just a run right up the gut for great yardage and the touchdown. An 82-yard touchdown run, probably Cole's longest in his career. 82 yards, six points later, the Greyhounds now are gonna come out on the extra point. Now last week, we saw the Greyhounds all lining up on the right-hand side and then shifting to the left, and they do it again, but Ben Davis 
really doesn't look as if they're ready to go. And now the Greyhounds line up in the middle, and Mark Lavat, who was 22 for 24 and has had his last 11 attempts good, is on to try for another. The snap is good, kick is up and good. Lavat has 12 straight now, keeping that great extra point percentage going. And the Carmel Greyhounds taking a seven to nothing lead with at the end of the first quarter. So the Carmel Greyhounds on an excellent run from Toby Cole, his longest run from scrimmage of the year, possibly his career in a Carmel Greyhound uniform. That is the also the only first down of a possession on a run that the Greyhounds have scored touchdowns. They've gone twice to Ritz to get touchdowns on uh, passes, but never on a tight play like that where they've gone with runs. So the Greyhounds move at 82 yards, one play, a Toby Cole run, and that's definitely going to be one of the highlights of the week, I'm sure, kept in all Greyhound sports. And now Mark Levite comes to kick do the kickoff again. Last week we saw the Greyhounds switching back and forth between kickers. How much raised on the Greyhounds side and Mo Mark Levite will do the kicking duties for the Carmel Greyhounds. Big emotional edge also for the Carmel Greyhounds. Now they are really pumped. They know they can move the ball against the Ben Davis Giants defense. One time moving it inside the five, this time on an 82 yard run. Great boost for the Greyhounds. Joe Kaufman setting the Carmel Greyhound kicking team. And Lovat gets his foot into it. Another low kick, angled to the sideline, fielded by an up man at the 15. He brings it to the 20, the 25, the 30, breaks it to the 40 yard line, over the 40 to the 43 yard line. Carmel Greyhounds finally dragging him down after a great return. Well kept after a big emotion thing like that for the Greyhounds. Ben Davis is stunned, but that, that really is going to start them off strong. That's going to give them a little more incentive, I'm sure. So uh, we could really see a great drive by Ben Davis here. Will be first and 10 from the 42 yard line when Ben Davis comes. And I think we're going to see, we might see more than just the one man show from Corey Harris. So the Greyhound defense coming out strong. They want to stop Ben Davis right here. I formation behind Britt. Harris and Holbert, the running backs. Two men out wide to the right. Option play once again. Harris gets the call around the right side. He's to the 45 yard line around the outside to the 50. Knocked out of bounds at the 50 yard line, but a penalty flag on the play. We might see a holding call go against Guy Holbert. Of, Nor of Ben Davis is that was as they were holding him, holding a Greyhound down on the field. We do see a yellow flag. It does go against Ben Davis. I'm sure the Greyhounds will nullify that play. More of the strong safety coming around the weak side on that play. Looked like he might get Harris and was pulled down from behind. So a definite holding call against the Giants. I'll tell you, Cap, what do you think? Is uh, Harris a little bit cat-like quick? out on the field. We've seen just running, stopping, cutting back, and then just jumping forward. And a big play there. The Greyhounds now will bring up first and 15 from the Ben Davis 39. So the Greyhounds, or rather, excuse me, 35. So the Greyhounds have really gotten big plays and have moved Ben Davis back to where it has been more than 10 yards for them for a first down, and they get another big break here. When the Greyhounds hit Harris, they've really got to hold on to him there because he gets a little break and he is gone. I formation behind Brett Harrison, Holt, Holbert, the running backs once again. McGraw goes in motion around the left side. Hand off on the draw play right up the middle to Harris. He's over to the 40 and dropped down to the original line of scrimmage after the 10 yard pickup. So Harris, still a strong runner. The Greyhounds are going to have to stop him somehow this evening. I'm really surprised, and we have a hurt Greyhound down on the field. That's Jack Christie we see down on the field for the Carmel Greyhound as the, the coaches and trainers take a look at him. We'll take 60 seconds here. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. Our thanks go out to the following WHJE boosters. Dr. and Mrs. Robert Hartman, Norma and Bill Hasen, Jerry and Leslie Hawker, Ray and Pat Heffern and family, the Ron Herman family, Don and Doris Herman, Bill and Judy Heron, Bill and Mary Jo Hoffman, Craig and Alice House, Steve and Jackie Hoffman, Penny and John Holcomb, Mr. and Mrs. G. Frank Holland, the John R. Holmes family, Bruce J. Hopkins, M.D., Wendell F. Hoyt Plumbing Company, Hank and Carolyn Buter, Don Huey, Anna F. Hewlett, Mr. and Mrs. J. Michael Hurley, Indiana Music Company, Bruce, Steve, and Jim Inskeep, Dr. and Mrs. Philip H. Ireland, 
If you'd like to be a WHGA booster, send $15 for your family, $25 for your business to the WHJ Booster Club, 520 East Main Street, Carmel, Indiana, 46032. And your name or your family's name will be added to the list. Oh, and Jack Christie was helped off, off, off the field, although it finally did come, does come off his own power. We just saw a good 11-yard pass from quarterback Brett to receiver McGowan for an 11-yard pickup, which brings up a first down. It will be first and 10 from, ben, or from the Greyhound now, 46-yard line. First and 10, Britt sets up over center. The pros set in the backfield behind him with Harris and Holder. Two men out wide, left and right. Now another man moving in motion. Britt steps straight back in the pocket. Good protection over the middle to Harris. He's at the 35, the 30, and close to the 25-yard line. He has got amazing speed. Well, we knew they had good team speed. I don't think I was expecting this from Corey Harris. That time on a big pickup off a dump pass. And so... Harris off the cap, light quick moves, picks up an 18 yard pass now for Ben Davis and the Greyhound defense really needs to tighten up. So another first down for the Ben Davis Giants at their fifth of the ball game. And time is called here for the Carmel Greyhounds. I'll tell you, a key in this game, you know that Ben Davis does have the ability to score well and against the Greyhound defense, if the Hounds can tighten up and stop them when they can, but yet the Hounds' big key could be on offense. It's going to, it could depend on the Greyhound offense and the last few weeks scoring over 30 points in each ball game against the likes of Jay County, a very good team, plus Muncie North and Anderson Highland. So the Hounds can move the ball well, so hopefully we'll see some more offensive action from them. Hopefully the Hounds will be an underrated team and come in and knock off Ben Davis, but it is going to be a good game. Whenever we see Dullahan and Belden square off, it just seems to happen. The Greyhounds lead this series six to one. We lost the first time we ever played against Ben Davis in a sectional action. We'll be, we'll besides that, it's been the Greyhound series, but Ben Davis looking to turn that around tonight. So as the Ben Davis Giants are ready to play after the timeout called from the Carmel Greyhounds, both defenses have had trouble stopping the other offense. I'll tell you what, Cap, the Greyhound defense is getting on tight on the quarterback, Britt. There's been a couple split-second calls that he's done and computed. We could see things like that change and go the Greyhound's way. Pro set with Harrison Holbert behind the quarterback, Britt. Two men outside, left and right, tornado defense for the Greyhounds on the line. Britt calling the signals on the line. Possibly an audible, and he is going to run it right up the middle. Great pressure that time from the Carmel Greyhounds right on the line of scrimmage. But there is a penalty flag on the play. So that's we're going to have to wait and see what that penalty flag is on. It's going against the Carmel Greyhounds. A face masking call. That kills the Greyhounds there. Kep, is that's going to move the ball now all the way down past the 20-yard line. We see Drew McDonald, Rick Atkins, and Todd Green check in for the Greyhounds. That is it. A slew check out, a 15-yard penalty, moves the ball to the 15-yard line on the face-masking penalty, Cap. So that really hurts the Carmel Greyhounds as they had him drop for about a one-yard loss. Now they have it first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Britt sets up over center, the eye formation now behind him, two men out wide, left and right. McGowan and Dowler are his receivers. Harrison Holbert, his running backs. Britt calls out the signals at the line of scrimmage. Long count once again. It's the option play around to Harris on the right side, breaking tackles left and right, down inside the 10 to five. Touchdown, Ben Davis. Absolutely amazing play that time from Harris, scooting in and out of Carmel Greyhound defenders in for the six points. Cap, this boy's amazing. I'll tell you what, he's quick, fast, cat-like, and really sees things well and breaks tackles playing as if this means the rest of his life. As we take a look at some of the stats on Corey Harris, again, a six foot, 173 pound senior tailback, also can be a free safety on defense. And wow, Cap, good running back in him. So coming in for the extra point, Ben Davis straight on kicker. That is Cheryl, he, the kick is up and is no good. So the Carmel Greyhounds hang on to a slim lead of seven to six as the extra point attempt that time by Shable went wide to the wide to the right. 
Carmel Greyhounds dodge somewhat of a bullet there. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Cap. There's been, right now, we got 937 left to go in the first half. And think of some of the plays that we've seen happen already. The miss there, and also if the Greyhounds go for the field goal instead of going for it on a fourth down early in the game, a good gamble, not questioning Coach Belden, but we've really seen a lot of different things and a lot of switches of emotion, and this is a heck of a ball game. Seven to six, 9.37 left to go here in the first half. The Greyhounds on the plus side of that figure is they're taking a good Ben Davis team on during homecoming, which is even extra added a sin of for Ben Davis. Herman and Harrington, the men deep for the Greyhounds up around their 12 yard line. Shable the straight on kicker, ready to boot it down to him. Shable another short kick fielded by an up man that time in the 25 yard line out to the 30, stacked up right around the 32 yard line. You know, kept something interesting. The Greyhounds aren't going with usu their usual backfield of Moore along with Moore and uh, Herman. And they're, they're keeping away even when they send back Herman and Harrington. They're, they're kicking it to Gunderson as they did that time again. The Greyhounds now will start on their own 31-yard line. It will be first and 10, just under nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. So the Greyhounds coming with a lot, a much different formation here. A lot of movement in the backfield. Coming out wide to the right is Fewell and Gunderson. Padgett rolls back to his left, looking downfield, going deep downfield. That is Ritz on the sideline. It is incomplete down at the 20-yard line. An excellent pass that time from Padgett just out of the reach of Adam Ritz. Good defensive play by David Hackney as he broke that up. And for him to break that play up, Cap, without a yellow flag is definitely a very good defensive play. And Ben Davis now stops what could have been a big break play for the Greyhounds as they, they lined up that time with just about everybody but the front line in the backfield. So the Greyhounds come to the line once again. They send two men out wide to the left, one man out wide to the right, and a single setback, that being Cole. Padgett barks out the signals, looks left and right. Padgett handoff to the first man through. That's Cole. He stopped at the line of scrimmage, maybe picked up maybe a yard on the play. So Toby Cole moving the ball out for the Carmel Greyhounds. We're going to have to wait and see. He does pick up one yard on the play. In check sharp now for the Greyhounds. So we could see the Greyhounds famous draw play here to sharp. I think that'd be definitely one that I would call now for the Greyhounds. We could see the play action pass. So now three wideouts once again. Fewell, Sharp, and Taylor as wideouts. Quick slant over the middle to Taylor. It's incomplete, but there's a penalty flag. It appeared as if Taylor got hit before the ball arrived around the 40-yard line. So this could be a big break for the Greyhounds. A late flag on the play, and one of the Ben Davis coaches not happy about that one. A good break for the Carmel Greyhounds, though. Because now they'll mark it. They're talking with Padgett to wait and see what's going to happen. The Hounds get a good pass interference. I thought we might have seen it earlier. Maybe I want to call that a makeup call because I'm not going to complain. Bird moves the ball out now to the 49 yard line where we'll be first and 10. The Greyhounds with another good break. The Greyhounds pick up 15 on the Ben Davis Giants penalty, picking up another first down there, sixth of the ball game. So it'll be first and 10 on the 47 yard line. Padgett over center eye formation with Cole and Herman, the running backs. Gunderson moves in motion from right to left. Padgett rolls back to pass, fakes the handoff, looking downfield. A lot of pressure put on by Ben Davis, gets it off. Incomplete, short of the receiver, Adam Ritz. Well, I think the Ben Davis fans there want a grounding, but that's really a hard call. They just say anybody who's not in the near vicinity, well, the near vicinity is not really said is that that's the same county, state, or football field, or within three yards. But uh, you don't see grounding call a lot more unless it is very obvious. So now second and 10 now from the Greyhounds own 49 yard line is, or rather 48 as they're looking to put together a big drive against Ben Davis. And Halen's going into the air a lot. 
Once again, the Greyhounds bringing in a lot of new formations. Now Taylor and Fewell moving out wide to the right. Two men in the backfield. Hand off to the Sharp around the left side on the misdirection, getting a couple yards into Ben Davis territory down near the 47. So Sharp with somewhat of a strong pickup now. About a four-yard gainer for Mike Sharp, the senior who we've seen hurt lately for the Greyhounds. That time he comes in, picks up about four yards on the play for the Greyhounds. He's the Greyhounds' leading rusher so far in the ball game with 23 yards rushing on six carries. So it'll be third down and six yards for the first down. Tuman come out wide to the right, and now Padgett drops back in the shotgun formation. Gunderson and Harrington is wide out. Padgett drops back to pass. Good protection this time. Looks over the middle. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Pete Harrington around the 30-yard line. So the Greyhounds unable to convert on the third down play. So on fourth down, we could see a punt. He was looking for Sharp out to the right-hand side, just off the line of scrimmage, about three steps out, where all he would have had to do was just jump and maybe gotten into the first down territory, but that is going to bring on Chris Rasmussen and the Greyhound punting team. So Rasmussen, the junior, coming in replacing Sharp as the punter. Penalty flag on the play as, as Rasmussen gets off a high punt, not very long, fielded at the 16-yard line, dropped at the 20. Good drop by Bowen and Kennedy on the play as we see Kennedy getting pretty physical down there on the play. We're going to think that they might bring that one back. That is going to be a penalty against the Greyhounds. That will be an illegal motion penalty against the Carmel Greyhounds, so that'll bring it back a few more yards, and Rasmussen will kick it again most likely, unless Ben Davis would like to take the ball where it is. But I don't think they will. They will bring it back. The reason for the illegal motion was that he did not take a step. He took a step to move to get the ball. He did not wait for the ball to come his way, and that hurts the Hounds now. As they're going to have to set up now at the five-yard penalty. It's going to be fourth and 10, of course, the punting crew for the Greyhounds still on on the illegal procedure called for the legal motion. 7.27 left to go in the first half. Our score is 7-6. The Greyhounds on top of a very capable Ben Davis Giant ball club. Rasmussen back on his own 32-yard line set to kick. Two Ben Davis Giants deep at their 22. Rasmussen gets a low kickoff this time, fielded at around the 27-yard line, fumbled at the 30-yard line, a scramble for the football. First indications, and first indication says it's Carmel football, and it is first down, Carmel Greyhounds at the 30-yard line, fumble on the play, and Greg Bowen recovers the fumble for the Carmel Greyhounds. It was a low kick by Rasmussen, wasn't fielded properly by the Ben Davis deep man. Carmel Greyhounds first and 10 on the 30. A man was Dimitri Dowler for Ben Davis, who had the problem. This happened to the Greyhounds last week, as we, rem as we remember. That's one of, when one of Ben Davis's, or rather, excuse me, Muncie Norris' touchdowns came. Maybe the Greyhounds can turn the same fate. Eye formation behind Padgett on the 30-yard line. It is Cole and Sharp, the running backs. Two men out wide to the left. Hand off to Cole right up the middle. He gets good yardage. He's to the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Good enough for the first and 10 for Carmel Greyhounds. Good play that time by the Greyhounds, faking the pitch to Sharp and giving it up the middle to Cole. So Toby Cole, the wild maniac, as he's sometimes called by teammates, really a wild kid, but when it comes to football, he really brings a lot to the team. Very fired up, and that time picks up a big gainer now, and the Hounds have it on the 16-yard line. First and 10 on the 15-yard line. Power eye formation for the Greyhounds with two tight ends in the ball game. Ritz and Herman, the tight ends. Moore, Sharp, and Cole, the running backs. The fake handoff going out wide to Sharp around the 10, the 5, and it is just inside the five yard line. That is Moore, the receiver on the play, coming out of the backfield down to the one yard line. Great play from the Carmel Greyhounds. Well, they might, they are gonna mark it just short of the goal line kept. We're gonna have to wait and see. Moore did slide some, but they are gonna mark it on the one yard line. Here comes the full house formation. And I think we might see another one to Toby Cole once again for the Greyhounds. Second and just inside. It's the handoff right up the middle. Touchdown, Carmel Greyhounds. Great play from the Carmel Greyhounds. Just a power play leaping over the line that time for the touchdown. Carmel Greyhounds advance their lead to 13 to six. So Toby Cole now with a team leading 13 touchdowns. Kept one thing now. The Greyhounds are lining on the right-hand side. Ben Davis is lining to the left. Now the Greyhounds shift back to the left. I thought we might see a quick play. 
but the refs haven't had, didn't have the ball set up. We might have seen it. The Greyhounds now they 13 to six lead. So Lavat trying to extend his 12 perfect point after attempts streak and it is up and good. So Lavat gets 13 in a row and extends his great percentage in point after attempts this year. So the Hounds take it 35 yards on just, or excuse me, 30 yards on just three plays as they put together another score. And the Greyhounds now on top, 14 to six. Mark Lavat with his extra point is good. That is now Lavat, I believe stands at 24 for 26. Plus he's had now 12 straight, or excuse me, it's 13 straight now, point after attempts good. Mr. Steady Mark Lavat now in to set, the, or in to kick for the Greyhounds. Joe Kaufman, a junior linebacker to set him. As we're gonna see, I'm sure, the Greyhounds are gonna try to take it back to Dowler once again, as he had problems on the last punt. You gotta keep him with the shakes, because it's really hard to shake off something like that. You know it will be going through his mind. Kaufman to set the team. Dowell, Adams, and Harris deep for the Ben Davis Giants. Kaufman sets the team, and it's a onside kick for the Carmel Greyhounds down to the 45-yard line, recovered by the Carmel Greyhounds. An incredible play, catching Ben Davis completely by surprise. The entire Carmel Greyhound sideline is on their feet, jumping around, helmets raised. We've seen the Carmel Greyhounds do that play a couple of times in practice, practicing it every week. This time they bring it out, and it'll be first and 10 inside the 50-yard line. So now down to the 47-yard line cap, and as you see smiles and clapping on the Greyhound side, a lot of Greyhound fans with 5.52, plenty of time to move the ball to the end zone, 14 to six. If the Greyhounds can put one here, Ben Davis is gonna have a lot to come back at halftime. Gunderson and Harrington go wide to the right. Sharp and Cole, the running backs behind Paget in the pro set. Paget on the handoff to Sharp right up the middle. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, nothing more. If even that, he might have lost a couple inches on the play. I'll tell you, now is when that Ben Davis defense will tighten up. There's gonna be a lot on that front line. We could see a quick onside pass. There is a flag down on the play, and it goes against the Greyhounds. So they will talk to Ben Davis as they're gonna step it back now. 10 yards on the play, or excuse me, that's 15 yards. We couldn't see what the penalty is and where it was called, but because it was just a massive players down on the field. They called it a 10 yard penalty. Maybe it's 10 yards from where the, where the flag was thrown. So it is going to bring up now first and 21 for the Greyhounds definite passing situation. So first and 21, a lot of movement in the Carmel Greyhound backfield. Pros set in the backfield behind Padgett with Sharp and Cole. Option play, Sharp gets the call around the right side into the 45 yard line. No, rather that is Moore getting the pitch on the option play around the right side. So the Greyhounds now pick up a few yards on the play, about a two yard pickup for Tom Moore. And we've seen more and more coming in for the Greyhounds. Tom Moore checking in very often now on that Greyhound offense. So it will be second down and 17. Padgett drops back in the shotgun formation, two men out wide to the right. And two tight ends in the ball game. Padgett drops back to pass, a lot of pressure from the backside and he is dropped at the 35 yard line. Coming from the backside of Ben Davis Giants defensive end got around the end of the Carmel Greyhounds. Well, that is going to be about a six yard loss kept. We've seen it happen to us. We might see a quick kick brought in by the Greyhounds on third down on a long situation like this. A long third down. Although Coach Bell not one to give up anything, we could see him go ahead, go for the pass, why not? as the Greyhounds take a timeout. And that gives us time to take a timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. Our thanks go out to the following WHJE Super Boosters. Bennett Music Company. Bennett Music features recording studios for many different audio needs. In fact, most all of WHJE's jingles were recorded at Bennett Music. Call Joe Bennett at 257-6293 for more information and Butler Toyota of 96th and Keystone. Butler Toyota has put WHJE on the road to bring you more exciting Greyhound action. 
Butler Toyota has done this by providing WHJE and CHTV with a brand new Butler Toyota van. Butler Toyota at 96th and Keystone for new or used cars or trucks. Call 846-9600 for more information. That's Butler Toyota at 846-9600, home of the fussy customer. WHJE and CHTV would like to say thanks to these super boosters for their very generous contributions. Davis High School, Yancey Deering along with Kep Carmichael. The Hounds now have it at third and about an acre with just with three minutes, four minutes left to go in this first half. Padgett drops back in the shotgun formation. There are three wideouts for the Carmel Greyhounds, third and 28. Padgett drops back to pass, a lot of pressure, steps inside the pocket, going deep or on the right side, it is incomplete. Almost intercepted down near the 22 yard line. Gunderson and, Gunderson and Ritz down in the vicinity of the pass, so it'll be first, fourth down for the grounds, but there is a penalty on the play. A penalty on the play, Ron Stout almost with the interception. The line at the line of scrimmage, could see, I think that's gonna be a roughing the passer against Ben Davis, so it's going to still be third down and move the ball out a lot. It is about third and close to 30 now for the Greyhounds before the penalty. And that could be, that is a 15 yard penalty. Moving the ball now all the way back to the 50 yard line and it will be only now kept third and 13. So the Greyhounds getting a bit of a break there. Mike Fewell coming in for the Greyhounds, bringing the play in. Fewell, a senior wideout for the Greyhounds, getting limited action this year. King leads the Greyhounds to the line. A lot of movement in the backfield once again. Split formation for the Greyhounds. Padgett drops back in the shotgun formation. Two tight ends of the ballgame, possibly a draw. Handoff, no, it's a fake handoff. Padgett rolls to his left, looking deep down the field. Harrington, complete down the five yard line. Touchdown, Greyhounds. There is a penalty flag on the play. That might be defensive pass interference, but touchdown Greyhounds, an excellent pass from Padgett to Harrington. He caught the ball around the five and jumped into the end zone. We just missed a heck of an exhibition on how to give a high five by Eric Gunderson. That's going to be the touchdown, though, off the pass interference. The Greyhounds lighting things up from Ben Davis High School on the Ben Davis homecoming. Now 20 to six lead for the Greyhounds. The Hounds again are gonna line up to the right, but we see him shifting and with the emotion that's going on, Kep, we could see anything happen. 3.42 left to go in this first half of play. And the Hounds, Cole is talking to that front line. Now they're gonna shift back to the left, so probably going to go just for one, Kep. So Lavad ready to kick the extra point. Gunnarsson, the holder, and Mark Elliott, the sophomore, will be the snap. Carmel Grounds trying to extend their lead to 21 to six after the connection from Padgett to Harrington. Snap is good, kick is up and good. And Levi is three for three in the ball game, 14 straight so far in the season and a total of 27 and 25 on the year. So after a large 50 yard touchdown pass, the Greyhounds move it after an onside kick cap after a slew of penalties also against the Greyhounds and plus a big sack. It only took them actual five, only five plays to move the ball into the end zone. And that is going to be Harrington's first touchdown reception as a Carmel Greyhound. He threw one last year as a quarterback, but that is his first one of the season. Is celebrating in the end zone. We saw Harrington and Gunderson on how to give a real high five. And now the Greyhounds, after, a, after the pass interference penalty, will have the ball, the kick now from the 45 yard line. Lavat's gonna do the kick. We might even see that onside kick again from there because if not, they're just gonna still give Ben Davis, they're not gonna have great field position. And with only 342 left to go, we could, we might see the onside kick again, Cap. Hey, why not? Things are going the way, the right way for the Carmel Greyhounds. That time facing a third and 28, getting a roughing the passer call and then a big 50 yard touchdown reception from Paget to Harrington. This has been really one wild ball game, Kep. This is the game that memories are made of now. The Greyhounds now are gonna kick it from the Ben Davis 45-yard line. Mark Levat might have his first opportunity 
to get it into the end zone of the ball of the season. Although, excuse me, he did do it one time at the dome. So Herm, rather Kaufman, setting the team, and Lavat set to kick off, and it's a low kick fielded by an up man at the 15, brings it to the 25, breaks a tackle after the 30, fumble on the play, and it looks like it was recovered by the Ben Davis Giants on the 30-yard line. Close, kept real close. Wow, we're seeing all kind of exciting action coming here. I don't think the Greyhounds, they've taken a, every break they can and almost had another one. Now the tough blue steel defense just has 335 left to hold Ben Davis. Tell you, Kep, I'm glad I'm not going to be at home in halftime at the Ben Davis locker room with Coach Dick Dohan. It's not going to be a fun, exciting place to be as our score is 21-6, 330 now left to go in the first half. Ben Davis has under th just under three and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Single back formation, three wideouts for the Ben Davis Giants. Carmel Grounds doing a little shifting. Britt straight, drops straight back to pass, looking right after good protection. It is incomplete that time. A great play by some Carmel D secondaries. Broken up by T Mark Lovat on the play. Good break up by him as the pass was intended for McGowan, who already has an 11-yard reception on the evening. And now that will bring up second and 10. Second down and 10 for the Ben Davis Giants. Carmel defense is really pumped up here, not wanting to give up any more yards than they have to. The I formation behind Brett Harris and Holbert are his running backs. Two wideouts, McGowan and Dowell. Dowell now moves in motion from left to right. Britt barks out the signals. He drops back to pass, fake handoff, dumps it off to Harris at the 30, breaks the tackle at 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, and out of bounds inside Greyhound territory at the 42-yard line. Good break up on the play by Metford. Metford knocks him out of, play, out of bounds on a, the, on a trip play after a big break up now. 3.01 left to go. The Hounds have to keep, actually, it's Harris and his team out of the end zone. Although I think, I still think we're going to see Ben Davis mix it up more because we know that Britt likes to pass and is a pretty effective passer. So anything really we could see come out of the Ben Davis play bag. 27 yard reception from Britt to Harris. Pro set formation, Harris and Holbert are the running backs. Mandal moves in motion from left to right once again. Britt drops back to pass, looking down the right side, incomplete. Intended receiver was Mandal at around the 35 yard line. Pass was just a little bit underthrown. So, as we said, we might see him come out passing a little more, although they've not been effective on big passes. The pass to Harris was just a screen dump off in the middle to Harris. We haven't seen really a good long pass by Brett of sub any substantial yardage. Now it is going to bring up second and 10, 257 now left to go in the first half. The I formation once again behind Brett. Holbert is the fullback. Harris the tailback. McDowell moves in motion once again. McDowell. McGowan, the other running, the other wide out. On the option play, Britt keeps it and is dropped from behind by Drew McDonald at the 42 yard line. So finally Drew McDonald making a couple big plays. We've seen him have a lot of opportunities, but finally uh, being able to cap that one in as he does stop right at about the line of scrimmage, bringing up third down and 10, 2.34 left to go here in the first half. The Greyhound defense on a big play now. Cap, I think we're going to see this one go to Harris, what running back that he is, a quick moving senior tailback, definitely a man to watch. Definite passing situation here. Harris moves out as a wideout now behind McGowan. McDowell, the other running back. Harris in motion, split formation. Britt drops back to pass, complete to McDowell at the 35-yard line, but dropped immediately by Tom Moore. Good heads-up play that time, staying right on him and not allowing the first down. Well, that actually that pass was brought up by Harris. It's going to be now fourth and four. It is 150 left to go in this first half. I think we're going to see Ben Davis go for it. So Ben Davis will be going for it on the 36 yard line. Greyhound defense must dig in here. Fourth and four, big play. I formation with Holbert and Harris in the backfield. Two men go out wide to the right. Britt barks out the signals, pitch back, and after there's penalty flags on the play before the play got off, that will be illegal procedure against the, it's a delay of game call rather, against the Ben Davis Giants. That will change things just a bit here. The penalty will be marked off 
against the Giants, and maybe they might be forced to punt after the five-yard penalty is marked off. Well, with the, the, the time, I, we might even just see him. They could go for it because this team is very capable of breaking open a big play. Britt, as we do see, stays in the ball game. So they're going to go for it on fourth down now. It's going to be, again, fourth and about seven for Ben Davis. So the pro set formation with McDowell, with Holbert and Harris. Britt pass over the middle to the 30-yard line. Penalty flag on the play. That will be good enough for a first down inside the 30-yard line. We will see what the penalty is, who the penalty is on. And then they roughing the passer call against the Carmel Greyhounds. The Greyhounds have been just maybe a little too fired up there on defense because that's they've had that call now and they've had a face masking call. The Hounds need to just relax a little bit, I think, maybe on defense. Keep the aggressiveness, but don't get out of control. And I'm sure that's what Belton's going to be telling them during halftime now. 1.23 left to go. Now it's when things are starting to get excited after the eight yard completion. It is going to be a first down, plus you gotta remember the penalty against the Greyhounds. So the 15 yard penalty marked off and that will be first and 10 on around the 15 yard line. A minute 23 left to go in the second, in the first half. Carmel Greyhounds trying to dig in here. They do hold a 21 to six lead as they have shown excellent offensive skills. One back formation behind Britt. Two men out wide to the right, one man out wide left. Hand off to the first man through over to the 10 yard line. In on the carry that time was Jeff Autry. That's the first time we've seen him carry the ball. So Jeff Autry checks into the ball game. Uh, I believe that might be the first play we've seen him in on the ball game. And Ben Davis takes a timeout, so that gives us time to take one. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. Our thanks go out to the following WHJE boosters. Mr. and Mrs. Larry C. Topsky, Richard and Carolyn Towner, Dr. Joe and Reverend Yvonne Trueblood, Twin Lake Apartments, Lena Ransberg, UN Printing Company, John and Eileen Vario and family, Bud and Jane Van Dyne, Paul and Karen Vaughn, Bill and Lorna Wagner, Trudy and John Wanchow, Dave and Linda Warder, Buzz and Mary Wiziger, TJ and Sherry White and family, Pat Wiley, Will Wright Building, Willow Tree Enterprises, Janet Baines, the Tom Winter family, Jack, Cindy, Pete, Chris and Karen Wodak, Hugh and Val Wolf, Larry and Carolyn Woodling, Dick and Barbara Yoho, Bob and Carolyn Yost, and Wayne and Dawn Zielinski. If you would like to be a WHJ booster, please send $15 for your family, $25 for your business to the WHJ Booster Club, 520 East Main Street, Carmel, Indiana, 46032. This could be a big boost for the Giants score here, and then they get the ball back at... So the, the Ben half. Davis Giants come to the line of scrimmage at second down and eight, just inside the 15 yard line. Britt over center with one man in the backfield, two men out wide right, one man out wide left. Britt barks his signals and he's going into the corner of the left end zone and it is incomplete. Great defensive play that time put in by John Spidell, the cornerback moved from strong safety to cornerback through the air and he has really fit in well there this year. That has been a heck of a, a move that, they, that the defensive coaches have made, moving, bringing in Mefford at safety, moving uh, Spidell out at quarterback, and then they also have a good quarterback and Chris Spar who comes in in Spidell's place. So the Greyhounds, that, with that move, really kind of makes them deeper, Cap. So it'll be third and eight from the 13-yard line. I formation with Holbert and Harris running backs. Britt rolls to his left. Complete pass to Autry at the 10-yard line. He's at the five and stopped right there from a from a lot of white jersey from the Carmel Greyhounds. In there once again, John Spidell. So now it is is it a first down? That that could be close. We're gonna have to wait and see as they mark it. One minute left to go, and they're gonna bring the chains out now. We have one minute left to go here in the first half. The Hounds surprisingly on top, 21 to six. This has been a heck of an emotional game. The Greyhounds, if they need to stop them, I don't think we're gonna see Dick Dullahan make any move to kick a field goal, unless it's a fake, but we will probably see them go for just, the, if they, it will be a keeper if they don't, and it is a first down. So first down for Ben Davis after Autry picking up 
An eight yard pass. So Autry picks up the first down on the pass from Britt and it will be first and goal to go from the five yard line. Now exactly one minute left to play in the first half. Carmel Greyhounds with a commanding 21 to six lead as Toby Cole has just been overpowering for the Greyhounds. And taking it to the line of scrimmage, Britt with the I formation, now going to the power I formation. Autry, Holbert, and Harris, the running backs. Penalty flags on the play. That will go against the Giants. A lot of movement on the line. So we could see an offside call go against Ben Davis. As they are going to call offsides against Ben Davis. So a five-yard penalty helps the Carmel Greyhounds. So penalties plaguing both teams. The Carmel Greyhounds have been penalized 40 yards so far in the half, and Ben Davis twice that many, 80 yards in the first half alone. So now we'll bring up first and goal from the 10 yard line. As Britt takes him to the line of scrimmage, full house, rather a power eye formation, Autry, Holbert, and Harris, the running backs. Quick snap on the option play, and Britt will keep it himself, and his fumble on the play, recovered at the 15 yard line by the Carmel Greyhounds have recovered the football at the 15 yard line. That is the second fumble recovered from for the Carmel Greyhounds in the ball game. Just excellent football that time. Britt was hit at the 10 yard line. Ball popped loose and recovered by the Carmel Greyhounds. So the Greyhounds take over on their 19 yard line. Kep, we have 53 seconds left to go in the ball game. The Greyhounds have made big plays the last two weeks, especially tonight. We could now we could have big play here for the Carmel Greyhounds. I'm sure they're going to try to keep it up in the air, but yet they're going to try to take enough time to stop Ben Davis. They don't want to give Ben Davis the ball back. That is their first option. The second thing they want to do is get the ball into the end zone. Now, just over 30 seconds left to go. Full house formation, two tight ends. Carmel, Carmel Greyhounds looking just to fall on the ball, and Padgett just runs forward for about a yard on the play on, on the keeper, just trying to run that clock down. That will probably be the last play this half. 19 seconds left to go. We're, we might see the Greyhounds take a knee once again. As we do have now 12 seconds and counting the Greyhounds on top, 21 to six. Is what we've seen a heck of a ball game. Big plays for both teams. And the Greyhounds have just come out on the good side of things. The Greyhound fans now standing on their feet. And that's the end of our first half. The Greyhounds on top, 21 to six. We will be back after a 60 second booster timeout for an interview with coach Ray Lawrence of the swim team. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. Our thanks go on to the following WHJ boosters, Dr. and Mrs. Tom Irvin, Stan and Marcia Isaac, Pink and Peg Jacqueline, Jerry and Carol Jansen, Jack and Susie Jenny, John and Friends Hair Design, Marie L. Johnson, Ted and Nyla Johnson, John and Sue Johns, the Tom Kaminsky family, John and Karen Kane, Kenneth and Mary Kaneshiro and family, Fred and Donna Kaufman, Linda Kelly, Keltner and Associates Incorporated, Roger and Mary Kemper, Clyde and Mary Kernick, Steve and Judy Knapp, Rich and Gwen Nipstein family, Roberta M. Coors, Danny and Joe Corson, Marty and Bill Kozar. If you would like to be a WHJ booster, send $15 for your family, $25 for your business to the WHJ Booster Club, 520 East Main Street, Carmel, Indiana, 46032, and your name will be added to the list. Guest during the ball game this evening is head coach of the girls' swim team, Ray Lawrence. How you doing today, Mr. Lawrence? Pretty good, pretty good, really. Well, another fantastic season for the girls' swim team. How do you view this season? Well, I think it's the strongest team we've ever had. Um, certainly the potential to score maybe uh, even better than we did in state last year. I think we have to, uh, to race a little bit. Uh, we're having a little trouble finding races for one thing, and then when we're finding them, we're having f trouble finishing them. So we'll, uh, we'll have to work on that a little bit, I think. As you look at this team um, splitting it up into segments, how do you do view your short distance swimmers? Well, we're, we have the fastest in the state right now in the, in the sprint for uh, the 50 freestyle. And uh, overall, just generally speaking, the team is pretty solid down to the first three, four, five swimmers. Uh, um, in some cases, our fifth swimmer or sixth swimmer may be better than some of the 
some of the uh, second or third swimmers and other teams. Now, if you had to pick a strong point of this team, what would that strong point be? Over the overall depth, I think. We have some real fast swims. We have people that are in um, you know, national caliber, but we also have the kids right behind them that are, that are filling in pretty well. Maybe 13 to 15 girls that could score at state meet. And that's, that's a lot. Usually, if you have five to eight, you begin foaming at the mouth. And we have 13 girls or, or 14 or 15 that might be able to score at state this year. So that's obviously, you know, pretty exciting. Okay, now you've faced some good competition, but still you haven't had a lot of close meets yet. Actually, haven't had a close meet so far. What's that do to a team mentally? Well, I thought tonight's meet, or last night's meet, was, uh, was closer than I would have liked it. The score was, oh, I don't remember now, but um, it, it wouldn't show that it was that close. It was... Um, 113 to 59 or something like that but but what i saw was real close races and in, in uh, a lot of cases us being touched out and those are the same people that's going to score at state meet so uh, though the score may look uh, kind of wide here in a dual meet it's not necessarily so at state meet when you're looking at uh, the state championship then you start adding other people in uh, it could be a lot closer than than even the dual meet here i think this team has a lot of goals, I'm sure, just other than the state meet. What are some of the team's higher goals this year? Well, to win the state repeat would be our first goal, you know, and, and that's certainly in the shoe in, and I think that's became real obvious to, tonight. Um, the next thing we'd want to do, I think, is, is if, we, if we can repeat, and I think one of the things that, that would still, even after tonight, would still you know, say make us a, a, maybe a favorite going in would be our depth, but what we'd like to do is not just uh, win the meet, but win with style, win with class, and, and do it in a, in a fast way and not just overwhelm people with our numbers, but to, to make those numbers uh, uh, quality numbers also. You mentioned depth, and how do you view the, this year's young depth? Uh, what are they going to be like when they get a little older? Well, hopefully, um, one of the things that we're really, you know, fairly pleased with here is that the kids seem to get better every year, you know, in the program, and that's not always true in girls swimming, but uh, um, our first two state champions were seniors that never won before, so we know we can, we can get people faster, uh, and when you have kids coming in that are real talented, you know, we hope, of course, to go, go, go further and further with them, so, but there's a lot of things, and... Uh, a lot of things that can go on between years and years, and uh, a lot of it's just up to the kids how badly they want to be good or great. Now, and you, when you watch the girls' swim team, you really see a lot of team unity, a lot of pride. How do you keep them so united? Well, I, I, they're an awfully good group of kids, first of all. Um, they're highly motivated, self-motivated. They want to do well. Um, they understand, they all work real hard, and they all understand that people are out there trying to do, do their best. We had a girl make two of her varsity letter cuts this, this evening in JV events, which is really phenomenal swims. I mean, she's good enough to score at sectionals, yet she won't make our sectional team this year. Yet, you know, she, we're, she'll, she earned her letter tonight by, she scored uh, twice, made her varsity cuts. And everybody is pulling for somebody like that. I think that's, that's an exciting aspect here. Everybody realizes there's goals being met every day uh, in practice and then in, in the pool at meets also. And they sort of look out for each other in that way. I think that helps. Girls swimming team, actually both your swimming teams really seem to put in a lot of practice, a lot of extra practice. How do you get kids fired up when they have to come in for those morning practices before school every day? Well, it's not extra practice for us. It's just a way of life and, and in the swimming world. We have some kids that are aspiring to go to the Olympic trials and make the Olympic team. And, and unlike um, other, other sports, this is the, this, that's the pinnacle. So we have a, some people on here that are striving to be the same thing as starting quarterbacks in the NFL. And um, it takes that kind of commitment. You know, it's, it's just a, it's a matter of not doing any extra work. It's a matter of doing the work you have to do to be that good and to be a world-class swimmer or to be ranked in the world or ranked in the nation. And, and um, um, in, in the swimming world, you just put those hours in. We usually go about three hours a day. 
Now, a lot is not said about the girls' diving aspect of the swimming. Well, tell us a little bit about your, your, this year's diving core. Well, tonight, um, Kim Wagner had her best by far. She did a real nice job, almost broke 200 points and um, set back a little bit. Um, a couple of the other divers, uh, Diane Kashub is really coming along. She just started this year. Um, Jennifer Berman also coming along pretty well. And Allison Winters, our other diver, and she's right now struggling a little bit. I think uh, you know she she uh, struggled a little bit this evening. She hits her dives real well in, in uh, practice, so she can do them. It's just a matter of you know maybe getting turned around on the corner and, and in the competition. Um, but that's those things happen. You know people are up and down. They hit a little little uh, slump, but she certainly has the potential to be one of our top divers. You know and. and come on strong. She hits these dives daily and then, then has had a little trouble and meets is all right now. But I think that'll get turned around and, and change and then uh, we'll have two really pretty good solid divers. Well, Coach, good luck in uh, winning your first back-to-back -back state championships. Thank you. I hope we can do it. Well, I'm sure all the people in Carmel will be following swimming and pulling for you. We'll be back after this 60-second booster timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhound. Our thanks go out to the following WHJ boosters, Ron and Judy Bowman, Jim and Shirley Brake, Dr. and Mrs. Robert L. Bratton, Mr. and Mrs. David G. Breeding, Ted and Dottie Broad, Jim and Mary Ann Brocky, Billy Jean Brown, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis D. Brust, Larry and Kitty Buckle, Larry and Bonnie Burdick, George and Ollie Burrell, Jim and Joyce Burrell and family, Greg Burtnett, Terry and Rosalind Cady, John and Shirley Calhoun, Carmel Allstate Agent Robert Tresso, Carmel American Legion Post number 155, Carmel High School Ice Hounds Hockey Club, Ethel V. Carson, Tom and Barbara Cartmel, Dale and Ted Champion. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Chipetta. If you would like to be a WHJ booster, please send $15 for your family, $25 for your business to the WHJ Booster Club, 520 East Main Street, Carmel, Indiana, 46032. Welcome back to Penn Davis High School after some technical difficulties. Uh, we are bringing you the game. I'm Nancy Daring with me, Kep Carmichael, the Greyhounds. We're not exactly sure what all you missed, but you have anything that you've missed has been in a very exciting, very exciting first half. Taking a look quickly at the scoring in the first half, Toby Cole in the first quarter puts in an 82-yard run on the first play after a Ben Davis punt. Mark Lavat came on, added the point after attempt, and the Carmel Greyhounds were on top, seven to nothing. The next score of the game was a Ben Davis drive on the next play of the ball game. They took it, or the next possession, they took it five plays, 57 yards. The kick by Chappelle was no good, and the Greyhounds were on top, 7-6. to six. Some more lightning stuff after that. The Greyhounds now went for a punt, after, and then they were penalized five yards, and then the Hounds on the re-punt recovered a fumble. The Hounds then took it now, then just three plays and 30 yards. Mark Lavat came on to add his, I believe, 24th, or 24th punt of, or extra point of the ball game, and our score is 14 to six. And then the Greyhounds, after an onside kick, they recovered, and then finally, it, the final play after penalties hurt the Greyhounds, it was a third down and th 13 situation. They went upstairs, Pete Harrington, caught his first touchdown reception as a Greyhound. We knew he threw one last year, but he's never caught one. A 50-yarder, and the Greyhounds, after the Lafayette point after was good, were on top 21 to six. It has been a game full of big plays. The Greyhounds on the first possession opted to go for it on a fourth down situation from just about the eight yard line and missed. Ben Davis took it over and then had to punt. Another big play in the game was actually the last one. Weren't, or rather, Ben Davis was was definitely threatening Cap uh, down on a third down play, and then got a penalty against him for offsides against Ben Davis. And then on first down, at, from the 10 yard line, now it's first and goal from about the 10. The Hounds recovered a fumble. Bill Paget came out with under a minute left, took a knee on one play, and then the Hounds finished out the, that second half in the huddle 
or rather finished out the second quarter in the huddle, and our score at halftime is 21-6. Kep, so far, some quick thoughts on the game. I think it's really been impressive. Both offensive teams have done very well. The Carmel Greyhounds have really forced the fumbles, forced the turnovers. They've done that excellently, recovering two of them, and they also had an onside kick shortly after a Toby Cole touchdown, which really caught the Ben Davis Giants off guard. That, in turn, resulted in another touchdown and another big standout. Toby Cole has rushed for 115 yards. That really an impressive stat on and also his longest run from scrimmage of the year. Right now at halftime, we have the Ben Davis marching Giants. We lost it again. I lost the line. Dial tone.
Reception again of five will bring up a second and five for about the eleven yard line. Trip Decatur on the tackle for the Greyhounds. Bill Padgett on a one-yard run on the third down play. Grounds add to their lead. Again, that...
capped off a five-yard touchdown drive for the Greyhounds after recovering the third play of the second half on a fumble. The score now stands. The Hounds 28 and the Ben Davis Giants 6. Toby Cole leads the team out of the huddle off to the right side, now moving to the line of scrimmage. Gunderson to hold the point after attempt. Lavat attempting to convert. Kick is up and good. So the point after attempt gives the Carmel Greyhounds a lead, 28 to 6. As Lavat hits his 14th in a row on the extra point attempts, the Greyhounds move up now, excuse me, 28 to 6, and they were ready to kick off. The Greyhounds. We did see a yellow flag on that play on the kickoff, so we could see a penalty going either against Carmel or Ben Davis. We'll have to wait and see exactly where the penalty was. But now the Greyhounds in good shape now with a 28-6 to lead over Ben Davis to open up the second half. The Greyhounds looking to upset fifth-ranked Ben Davis on the Ben Davis Giants homecoming night here from Ben Davis High School. Yancey Deering and Kep Carm Carmichael bringing you all the action. Joe Kaufman, the junior linebacker, linebacker for the Greyhounds, set to set the kicking team. The T ball falls off the T, and Lavat puts it back on and ready to kick off. Back deep at his own three-yard line is the Ben Davis receiver. Lavat gets a good kick, another good one on the day, fielded at his own four-yard line. Brings it up past the 20-yard line and is dropped right there at around the 23-yard line. And there's the yellow flag on the play. To that could go against either team in the skirmish for the ball. The Greyhounds have had a little problem. They've been very intense the whole ball game. What that can do is the Greyhounds could be a little intense. We do see it now is a personal foul call against the Carmel Greyhounds. So a big penalty, another one against the Greyhounds. The Greyhounds all year have been plagued by penalties. Let's hope that stops going into sectional play coming up next week against Jay County. The Greyhounds hope to solve that before they go into the state tournament. It's very important now for Ben Davis to put together a big drive right now as they will be setting up at about their own 30-yard line after the penalty against the Greyhounds, actually about their own 29-yard line. Now Ben Davis coming to the line. It's first and 10 from the 39. So Britt sets up over center. The I-4 makes it behind him, two men out wide, left and right. Harrison Holbert are his running backs. Britt calls out the signals left and right. Long count over center. Hand off to the first man through. That's Holbert breaking some tackles left and right and dropped on the 45-yard line. Jeff Autry on the play for Ben Davis as he just replaced Holbert right before that series. Autry's been able to break open some big woods for Ben Davis. Uh, that one, a pickup of about seven on the play. So that's going to bring up second down and three. The Giants move to the line of scrimmage once again, now sending two wide to the left. Britt over center, eye formation behind him. Second down play, and about four. Britt calls out the signals left and right, hand off to the second man through. That is Harris, breaking some tackles up close to the 50-yard line. That'll be very close to another first down. So Harris, again, with a good move, the cat-like scat back for Ben Davis really is put on a heck of a performance tonight, really on his way toward having a 100-yard rushing game, and that is a first down for Ben Davis as we get the signals from the referee. So the hands fail to stop Ben Davis. It will be first and 10 from the own 49-yard line, just short of midfield now. Ben Davis still trying to put together a good drive against Carmel, and any hopes has come back in this ball game. Britt steps up over center once again. Two men in the backfield behind him. Britt drops back to pass. He is under heavy pressure, gets outside, puts it long pass downfield. It is complete down at the 25-yard line. An excellent catch that time by the Ben Davis receiver. Demetrius Dowler picking up the 26-yard reception. Another big reception on for him, and as he moves the ball down for the grounds. Earlier we saw he had some problems fielding the ball off of a kickoff and another fumble which was caused by him that the Greyhounds recovered so he redeems himself there on that 26 yard pass. Britt takes him to the line of scrimmage once again. Two men out wide left and right. Two men in the backfield in the split formation. Britt quick slant over the middle complete to the tight end that time inside the 25 yard line. Joe Doyle 167 pound 511 senior tight end picks up the 10 yard gain and now it will be first and 10 again 
for Ben Davis as they will set up now at about the Greyhound 12, or rather 14, looking to put a big one against the Greyhounds. Brett Overson, our I formation behind him with Adams and Harris, now wide left and right. Britt calls out the signals. Long count over center. Pitch back to Adams out of the backfield. He's over the 10, the 5, touchdown. Ben Davis, Tank Adams, rolls in for the touchdown. So it's five plays and 61 yards on the 14-yard touchdown run by Adams, making our score now 28 to 12. And Cap, we might see Ben Davis go for two points after they missed their extra point attempt after scoring their first touchdown so I think we will see him go for two as we see the Ben Davis quarterback and offensive troops stay on so they will now go probably for a two point conversion against the Greyhounds the Hounds need to stop him here Ben Davis brings to the line of scrimmage going for the two points there's the eye formation behind Brett one flanker back and two tight ends in the ball game now Dollar moving in motion Brett on the keeper right up the middle and will be stopped short of the goal line so the extra point attempt is no good. So Rick Atkins and John Spidell make the stop on Bread, and the Hounds stop him once again. Our score now is 28 to 12, with just over or just over five and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. The Hounds really playing good against Ben Davis, and what looks to be an upsetter here from Ben Davis High School. It's you're listening to all Greyhound action here on WHJE Carmel, the voice of the Greyhounds, with exciting football action from Ben Davis High School. Ben Davis was ranked fifth in the Class 5A rankings going into the ballgame, so if the Greyhounds could pull off a win here, it would be a definite upset. Especially this would be a big game for the Greyhounds as they head into the sectional action. The tournament starts the road to the Dome, and that will start Friday night. You can catch all the action here on WHJE. Harrington and Herman are the deep back for the Greyhounds back at their own 15-yard line. Shable, the straight-on kicker for Ben Davis, sets to get the kick away. Shable with a long 10-yard runoff before he gets the ball and now starts his approach. This another short kick will be fielded at the 15-yard line, brought up to the 25 and down just over the 26-yard line. So Ron Herman with another good return for the Carmel Greyhounds. Uh, we saw last week he really came in and filled the shoes of Mike Sharp very well as Sharp was hurt. We do see Sharp back in the game uh, this week. As he, will, as he has picked up quite a bit of yardage for the Greyhounds, I'd like to see Sharp pick up some more here, especially on this possession. The Greyhounds now will probably keep it on the ground, trying to run out the clock as much as possible. Bill Paget sets up over center of the I formation with Cole and Sharp behind him. Thewell split wide to the left, two tight ends in the ball game. Hand off to the second man through. That's Sharp. He is hit at the line of scrimmage, but continues to push forward for about five yards. So Sharpie picking up another five yards on the game for the Carmel Greyhounds. And again, very consistent running from Mike Sharp. Uh, Sharp also earlier in the year did all the punting for the Greyhounds, but Chris Rasmussen has come on to do the punting for the Hounds, and Raz is really doing a good job so far this year. So giving Sharp a little bit of extra time, the Greyhounds now set up at his second down and five. Paget sets up over King, the center eye formation behind him. Cole and Sharp are his running backs. Ben Davis putting a lot of men on the line of scrimmage. Pitch back to Sharp around the right side. He's breaking tackles and pushes forward for another good five-yard carry up to the 40-yard line. So that will be close to first down. I think Sharp might have gotten it. We're going to have to wait and see officially where they do mark the ball, but that is going to be very close. I think Sharp did pick it up. So the Greyhounds are on a good drive once again with another five-yard carry. The referees are asking to bring the chains out to measure it. It is that close. It will be just by a couple inches either way. So far in the ball game, Mike Sharp has had eight carries and 33 yards. So a pretty good game for him to come back after a uh, back injury. And the Greyhounds get the first down. It'll be first and 10 from their own 39-yard line. I think we haven't seen Toby Cole carry the ball some, so we might see him. Also, the Greyhounds have not passed yet in this second half, so watch for the Greyhounds maybe to put the ball up in the air some. It is first and 10 from the Greyhounds 39. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. King sets up over center. The pro set behind Padgett with Cole and Sharp. Two men out wide, left and right. Padgett barks out the signals. Hand off to Cole right up the middle. Hit at the line of scrimmage for no gain at all. So Cole has already crossed 
the century mark, uh, 117 yards on nine carries for the senior fullback. So he picks up no yards there. Watch the Greyhounds now. Maybe to open things up, try to go back upstairs. It will be second and 10 for the Greyhounds. So Padgett takes him out of the huddle. King leads him out. One man wide to the left, another wide to the right. Split formation behind Padgett with Sharp and Cole. A lot of men on the line of scrimmage once again for Ben Davis. Padgett drops back to pass, looking to his left. Pass is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, tight end Ronnie Ryan Herman. So the junior Herman, as opposed to the sophomore Herman, Ron and Ryan both. That one's Ryan Herman, the junior tight end. Maybe a little nervous as he has not had a reception all year long. They've gone to him a few times tonight. So we are seeing some more options with Herman, especially out of all the motion that the Greyhounds are using. There are a lot of different plays that we will see by them. Checking in the game, Eric Gunderson and Tom Moore as Gunderson brings in the play for the Greyhounds. So King leads him to the center once, once again, perhaps going upstairs on the third down play. Padgett over center. Ritz goes in motion, now sets back up over tight end. Two men wide left, split formation. Padgett drops back to pass. Under heavy pressure, gets the ball off complete. At the 45-yard line, takes it to the 50, down to the 50, inside the 50 to the 47. About an 11-yard pickup for Gunderson, his first reception of the game. That'll be another Greyhound first down. As we see a yellow flag on the play now. We saw one of the Greyhounds talking with the referees. They're now talking with Ben Davis. That's going to go. It's, it is a first down for the Greyhounds. They do go. Now we're going to see a penalty against the Greyhounds. I would think it would probably be an un, yes, it is an unsportsmanlike conduct call on the Greyhounds. So they will get the ten, the first down. But then they'll mark off the penalty against the Greyhounds. So it'll be first down in quite a while. So the Greyhounds. One of the linemen, we didn't see which one, talking to the referee, so must not have said some too friendly of words to the refs because that is penalty will go against the Greyhounds, bringing up first down and a whole lot now for the Hounds, moving the ball all the way back to about the 35-yard line, so I believe it will be first and 25 for the Greyhounds. The Hounds now needing a big play here. So they take him to the line, two tight ends, and the... Full house formation now switching. A lot of moving in the backfield. The I formation. Cole and Sharper as running backs. Padgett fake handoff. Running the option play. Cuts it inside. He's at the 40, the 45, the 50, the 55. Down to the 30-yard line. The 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Greyhounds. Bill Padgett on a 63-yard run from scrimmage. So Billy Padgett with his longest run, I believe, of his high school career, picks up the 65-yard touchdown run as the Greyhounds now move up 34 to 12. Again, that one going six plays and 64 yards for the Greyhounds as they started on their own 29-yard line. An unsportsmanlike conduct moved them back almost to the first line of scrimmage, and Bill Padgett on a 63-yard run moves the ball long for the Greyhounds. So the Greyhounds take the lead advance their lead rather to 34 to 12. Eric Gunderson will hold the ball for Lovat trying to convert the extra point. Lovat is perfect so far today. Lovat has already hit four this game which sets his total up to he's had 28 attempts he's converted 26 plus he's hit his last 14 straight so we're looking to up that mark some or rather excuse me his last 15 straight Lovat has hit so trying to Cross the 15 mark and get up to 16, which will be his longest streak this season. So Cole giving the Carmel Greyhounds instructions on the right side of the field. Then they'll move back over to the center of the field for the extra point. Greyhounds sometimes do this, and in a close ball game, they may try for the two point on a trick play here. Doubtfully, with this large of a lead, they're going to do it now as they move back over to the center of the field. Gunderson to hold. The sophomore, Mark Elliott will snap. The snap is good. Kick is up and good. Lovat converts the field goal. So Lovat with another field goal. The Greyhounds move on top 35 to 12 here from Ben Davis High School. Is there We see an upset in the making. The Greyhounds beating Ben Davis who is ranked fifth in the state going into the ball game. We could see them drop drastically if the Hounds do continue the game and beat Ben Davis on their own homecoming, which even makes it more of an incentive for Ben Davis to win and getting beat by the Greyhounds this bad on their own homecoming night as we saw all the halftime festivities here from Ben Davis High School. Uh, very up 
crowd for Ben Davis at the beginning of the game. They've quieted down a little bit, maybe even stunned. They've lost one game of the season. That was the first one against Cathedral. And now the Hounds looking to beat the Giants for their second loss of the season. So Kaufman will set the kicking team. Lavat has gotten some really good kicks so far in the ball game. Unlike normally his kicks are a little bit shorter. Today he has gotten them inside the 10 yard line. Now gets another good kick along the right side. That will be fielded around the five yard line. Brought up to the 10, the 15, the 20. Breaks some tackles and down at the 25 yard line. Fumble on the play, but they're saying he is down. So Ben Davis will take over on the 26 yard line. Ball carrier Scott McGowan for Ben Davis actually did fumble the ball after he was down. So the Greyhounds almost pull off another break and they've had quite a few breaks and they've taken advantage of each break in the ball game they've gotten. And so it will now set up at first and 10 from the Ben Davis 26 yard line. The Greyhounds now trying to stop Ben Davis once again. Ben Davis did convert their last possession into a touchdown. They're trying to do the same again. So Brett over center, two men out wide, left and right. Adams and Harris, his running backs. Now a man moving in motion, that is McGowan. Brett with a long count. Hand off to the first man through, that's Harris breaking tackles left and right, gets over to the 30-yard line to the 31 after a good six-yard carry. Six-yard pickup gives Harris 89 yards on the ball game off of 14 carries. Really a strong runner for Ben Davis. And really quick, he's just cat-like in his actions. The Greyhounds now, I think, have, have figured out how to stop him off all his herky-jerky moves where we've not seen him lift their feet on defense. They've just sat there and let Harris do all the moving, and that's when they stopped him. So once again, the eye formation behind Britt. Britt, fake handoff. It's the flea flicker, rather, Lee, and Britt goes deep down the right side. It is incomplete. Almost, rather, no, they're saying it is incomplete. It hit the ground before he picked it up again. McGowan down there arguing that he had the ball. They are saying it is incomplete. Lavat and Mefford on the breakup of the play. That flea flicker is one that Ben Davis has been using some. They give it a handoff to Harris and then a flip back to Britt. And Britt goes long and that time the Greyhounds foil the options. So it will bring up now third down and four. They could see it go to Harris once again to try to pick up the extra yardage. So the Ben Davis Giants regroup in the huddle now, a break huddle. Third and four, we're in the third quarter of action. Greyhounds are leading 35 to 12. I formation, Harris and Holbert are the running backs, two men out wide, left and right. Break calls out the signals. Greyhounds putting a lot of men on the line of scrimmage. Handoff does go to Harris right up the middle, and he gets enough for the first down after a good five yard carry. So the five yard pickup is a 94 yards on the night as he is really putting on a show for us here from Ben Davis. He is the leading man for the Giants. Leading man for the Greyhounds is Toby Cole as he has 118 yards on 10 carries. Harris on the ball game has 15 carries for 94 yards. So a big rushing game for both teams here at Ben Davis High School. So the Ben Davis Giants move to line once again. First in 10. Ben Davis Giants have kept it on the ground most of this drive. Perhaps they'll do it again. Pitch back to Harris around the left side. And now he breaks a few tackles over the 40 to the 45. Fumble on the play, but recovered by another Ben Davis Giant. So Ben Davis gives it to Harris once again as he crosses the century mark now on that eight yard pickup, gives him 102 yards on the game. So a big game from him as he crosses the 100 mark. Now, I'm sure he hasn't been doing this all season long, but a heck of a running back in Harris as he has really put together some moves on the Cardinal Greyhounds. The ball now sets on the 40 five yard line of Ben Davis. Second down and two. Autry and Harris, the running backs behind Britt. Two men out wide to left. Brick parts out the signals. Hand off to the first man through. That's Autry breaking some tackles over midfield down to the 25 yard line of the Carmel Greyhounds. A great, rather the 35 yard line of the Carmel Greyhounds on a great run from Autry. So Autry with a 20 yard pickup on the play. That gives him 29 yards on the ball game on just three carries. Autry has really come in to make some big plays happen for Ben Davis. And that moves the ball to into Greyhound territory. And Ben Davis now trying to score for the against the Hounds. So it's first and 10. Britt over center. Tuman out wide to the left. One man out wide right. Britt drops back to pass. A quick slam over to Harris, the receiver, he's inside the 30 to the 25, tackled down at the 23-yard line. 
An 11 yard pickup for Harris. As I, I have him unofficially for 62 yards in the ball game receiving. So he has put together over 150 yards total offense by himself as a good screen play by Ben Davis. Fools the Greyhounds moving the ball to the 34 yard line. So probably go to Harris again to try to break open the play and get move the ball even more toward the end zone. First and 10 from the 24. McGowan moves in motion. I formation behind him. Handoff does go to Harris right up the middle, but stopped at, at the 25-yard line. Big play that time from the Greyhounds. So that's the end of the third quarter after the two, negative two-yard run by Harris. As this drive has already gone 48 yards for Ben Davis. As the end of the third quarter comes around, we start fourth quarter action. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds, WHGE Carmel, bringing you great football action from Ben Davis. Is the, now Ben Davis... Is, who is trailing at this point 35 to 12 trying to come back come back against the Greyhounds maybe now it might not be for the victory because that could be a little hard to reach but if anything cap is for heart and for their own confidence because both these teams do start sectional action this week so Ben Davis looking to pick up a few more points as they are in great field position here at around the 25 yard line after the two yard loss a lot of Greyhounds in on that last play breaking right through the middle and pulling Harris down. Harris has really been awesome so far in the ballgame, showing great speed, lateral movement, and good power also. So Hans now trying to stop Ben Davis. It will be first and 10 for Ben Davis as they are making their way toward the Greyhound end zone. So from the 25-yard line, Britt sets up over center. McGowan and Dowell are wide left and right. I for rather split formation behind him. Britt drops back to pass, looking deep down the right side. The pass is incomplete in the corner of the end zone, just over through McGowan. So that will bring up now third down and 12 for Ben Davis. The Greyhounds really need to get a big stop here. They stop him in the backfield. It really puts Ben Davis in a bad situation just because it's really too close to punt, and it's also going to be too far for a field goal, so Ben Davis needed to big, make a big play here to try to get where they can at least kick a field goal. So Britt over center, Autry and Harris is running backs, two men out wide, left and right. Now McGowan moves in motion from left to right. Hand off to Harris, right up the middle and drop for a big loss. A lot of Greyhounds in on the tackle. Senior co-captain Trent Decatur on the big pickoff as Josh Malinchuk and Decatur exchanging displays of emotion in the Greyhounds. Stop Harris for eight yards on that play is that's going to drop him back to 92 yards now total rushing for him in the ball game the Greyhounds make a big stop and I think we might see Ben Davis go for it it's a little as again too close to kick but yet I don't think they have anybody who can kick a 40 yard field goal cap so it's fourth down and quite a long ways to go the Greyhounds digging in here hoping that they can give their offense a chance to take over in good field position Harris moves in motion. Britt drops back to pass. A lot of heavy pressure. Now moves down straight down the middle of the field. And it is caught for a touchdown. That is Harris on the receiving end of that play for a touchdown, Ben Davis. A 31-yarder for Ben Davis as Harris now with 82 yards receiving has really done a good job against the Hounds. And now I think that we could see Ben Davis once again try to go for a two-point conversion as we see Harris along with the quarterback, Britt, stay in the ball game. Also in there for Ben Davis' receiver, Demetrius Daller, who has picked up some yardage in the ball game in the passing category. So we could see Ben Davis once again. They will go for two. The Greyhounds trying to stop them. So Britt over center of the I formation. McGowan and Dowler are his receivers left and right. Now Dowler moves in motion. Britt on the fake handoff, looking to the corner of the end zone. Touched. Rather, the point after attempt is good. Two-point conversion to Dowler in the corner of the end zone. So that moves our score out to 35-20. The Greyhounds now with just over 11 minutes to go in the ball game. We did see a yellow flag on the play, possibly a roughing the passer against the Colonel Greyhounds. Again, showing a lot of emotion, maybe a little bit too much as they have had a couple unnecessary penalties like that face masking and roughing the passer. I believe that's the second roughing the passer against the Greyhounds. So that will give Ben Davis 
about a 10-yard penalty, so they will kick off from the Greyhounds' own 45-yard line. Going back to receive, we see Tom Moore along with sophomore Ron Herman to try to get back any yardage they can. So Moore and Herman are back far for the Carmel Greyhounds as Shable for the Ben Davis Giants will be kicking off from the Greyhound 45-yard line. So he will have a big opportunity here to put the Greyhounds at a disadvantage. So we might not see him try to go for the end zone because now Ben Davis has to cause fumbles. They're 15 points down if they can just cause any form of miscommunication on the Greyhounds' part. We could even see possibly an onside kick for Ben Davis here against the Greyhounds. So Shable, the straight-on kicker, sets for the 10-yard run-up as he normally does. As we're in the fourth quarter, the Greyhounds leading 35 to 20. Shavel gets a low kick, and that is steered by the quarterback for the Greyhounds, Bill Paget, on the onside kick attempt. So the Greyhounds will take over first and 10 from the 40-yard line. That's something we've seen the Hounds work on practice yesterday. We saw them move Bill Paget in. At first, they just did it as a joke, but then after a couple of practices at the play, Paget showing that he does have good hands, and he picks that one up for the Greyhounds on the um, on side kick, so the Hounds will start now from their 30-yard line, 10.56 left to go in the ball game. So, Bill Padgett takes him to the line, I formation behind him. Cole and Herman are the running backs, two tight ends in the ball game. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Hand off to the second man through, that is Herman, squirms through for a few yards over the 35. So, Ron Herman picking up five yards on the plate. That's only his third carry of the ball game. He did have two carries to start the game off, but we, he's been silent so far in the game out of the backfield, so he has 21 yards so far on three carries for the Carmel Greyhounds. So the Greyhounds take it to the line once again, second down and five. Eye formation behind Patchett, Cole and Herman are his running backs. Two tight ends, Herman and Ritz in the ball game now. Patchett barks out the signals, a lot of pressure on the line of scrimmage from Ben Davis. Handoff goes to Herman right up the middle over the 41 40-yard line, close to the 43-yard line. That'll be good enough for a Carmel Greyhound first and 10. Good pickup of six yards once again from Herman as he has 27 on the ball game. So Herman with two quick carries and 11 yards for the Greyhounds. That moves the ball out to the Hounds' 41-yard line. Bill Padgett getting some signals as Mike Thewell checks into the ball game, a senior receiver for the Hounds. Todd King, the center for the Greyhounds, leads him to the line. Two tight ends again for the Greyhounds. Two men out wide, left and right, eye formation behind Padgett. Padgett barks out the signals. And on the option play, keeps it, turns it upfield to the 45, over midfield to the 51 yard, 49 yard line of Ben Davis. Bill Padgett with the nine yard run for the Carmel Greyhounds, and Padgett in clear. 